feel about the guys you were in the ring with? Um, I wanted to kill them. <laughs> well, I can tell. Why, why did, uh, I'm laughing nervously. Um, why, you really felt that way? Well, yeah. So would you sit and think about it before a fight? Think about the guy you were fighting? The more you hurt them, the higher you go in life. The more you hurt them, the more people love them. So when you knocked him out, you were satisfied, happy? Wasn't good enough. At that time in my life, it wasn't good enough. You wanted to keep going? I told you, but yeah, I wanted to crush his spirit. I don't want him to ever think he could be. Fear is like fire. If you know how to control it, it keeps us all warm. It feeds our food, it, it, it heats our food and everything. But if you um, let it get out of control, it's for sure you will there's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want even children. Praise be to Allah. Don't you mind in the state, you got your punk ass white boy? Come here and tell me that if I fuck you in your ass, you punk white boy. Look at you scared now, you oh, Scared like a little white pussy. Scared of the real man. I'll fuck you till you love me, faggot. What are the qualities you admire in people? Um, yes, um, desire. Um, I'm, I, I respect a person who's willing to die for what he truly wants. Even if it's love, even if it's a, a woman, whatever is it that he truly believes in. For love exists, I look at love as a, a command to just rise to your greatest potential. That's how people should feel. Their objective should be to rise to their best potential in life. If it's to lose 30 pounds, if it's to pass a test, it should be um, to win a fight, to be, um, to be admired by people all over the world. It should allow you to rise to your greatest potential, that you look at yourself in the most grandest fashion. Perhaps what was one of the most important experiences for you um, meeting Customato. I wanted to make Cus proud. That was my whole existence of fighting. I wanted to make him proud. I never knew what it was like to have a father. So now I understand what some kids must feel when they can't make their fathers happy. Because he, um, he would do anything for me. I was just disappointed that I didn't kill them back then. That was just my main objective because I wanted to succeed so bad and I was failed and I just, um, the fear of not succeeding was, was worse than dying. So I just wanted to make sure they never got up. He reminds me of Edmund Dante from the Count of Monte Cristo. This guy was always, till the day he died, he was always planning his revenge and his comeback for the people that put him in self-exile from boxing. Um, these, these guys are dead and he's still planning revenge on these guys. And he always planned for his... Um, his great comeback in boxing. Well, the lightning strikes twice because people spent their whole lifetime didn't even get hit once. I got Floyd Palace in the first time, and now here at the age of 76, I was fortunate enough to come into contact with this young man who has, in my opinion, all the requirements to be the great champion that I believe he's going to be. Maybe one of the best that ever lived, if he continues as interested as he, as he is now. I never look at it even though that's the way it is. I never look at it as he's my trainer, or my manager, or all that. I never really think of that too much. I just go about the way that he, that he has his feelings towards me. And it's like a father and son relationship. I'm trying to establish in them something for which to strive for. See, and as I said before, or earlier, that I find the best way of teaching by setting example. And you set a good example, and it appeals to them to try to emulate And most of his fighting was mostly psychological. He believed um, physical, the physical actuality of boxing was only 10% when the mind was 90%. He always believed in improving yourself and strengthening your mind. And you really couldn't do that just by talk. You had to do it by action and practice. Um, he made me believe that I was a god. And I tell them there's no difference between a hero and a coward at all. 
how they feel, but it's what they do that makes a difference. That's what makes a difference between here and the college. Now, the people who watch you do what you do, judge you on what you do, not how you feel. If you go out there and you do what you do, and you do it in what people call it in an heroic manner, they think of you as a hero. If you do things that a person does that's often re uh, referred to as cowardly or whatever, they think of you in that way. But the hero and the coward feel exactly the same. You have to have the discipline to do what a hero does and to keep yourself from doing what the coward does. Because I had really, um, he had this really um, megalomania ego. He said, you let me tell you something. You, you, all the prophets, all the gods you ever know about, if they had a son, their son couldn't beat my fighter. You know why? Because he's my fighter. <laughs> but he also taught you how to, he built that ego, but he also told, taught you how to be mean. He believed, you know, there's a quotation here in the, line, in the book where you say, Cus wanted the meanest fighter that God ever created. Someone who scared the life out of people before they even entered the ring. He trained me to be totally ferocious in the ring and out. Yeah, and that's what I was. Taught you how to, to completely be an animal in the ring. I mean, and build you in that way. No, but an animal, but a sophisticated animal, a smart animal, the lion and the fox. You know I me, mean? I could also, I could beat the vicious guys and I got smart the slicksters. So I was, um, I was pretty much didactic in that, that apartment pretty much. Um, but the, um, what really was um, the turning point is that there was nobody that could reach the core like Cuz could. No one could um, inspire me. We're all animals. We were born animals, and um, the society's teaching us, taught us to be human beings. And just like um, animals, which we are, some of them get domesticated sooner than others. And some takes a little longer to get domesticated. And that's who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us are ahead of each other. We're, some, we're not, the, you know, some of us are ahead, and some of us are lacking, but we're trying. But some of us still have our animal instincts. Yeah. That's for our survival mechanism. And the people that who don't have it and got became more rationalized, they're more acceptable to really um, supercilious illnesses, disease, and um, constantly self-suffering and all that stuff. Yeah, he always had me read mostly um, books about war. Claude von Klotzwitz. The yeah, um, this guy, he was a pretty interesting guy. He, had, he, had, he read Nietzsche. And this is why Cus read all those books. Cus was pretty much of an intellect, but he was an intellectual and philosopher about war. And he thought fighting was a form of war, you know? And he thought fighting was, um, Cus really thought he, he was like born 2,000 years too early. He should have been a Roman gladiator or something because he believed, um, he believed um, fighting was, um, your, your opponent's surrender, his total destruction. And he didn't think of it as, um, even though he said it was savage and ferociously, you had to do it in such a relaxed and calm state, you know, without any emotions. He enjoyed hurting the opponent. He wanted them to never have a chance to believe they could beat you. In doing that, and there's a quote in Machiavelli, the prince, and when they say, after you defeat, after you defeat the king and you cut off his head, you be audacious and you say what you're going to do to the next ruler and the next, con and the next um, prince that you're going to conquer, and that allows them to be intimidated. It, um, it speaks volume. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody that's ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Saying now, Mike, the bike. Somebody ought to come along and let you down. And he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive and I will watch him become a success. 
because I will not leave until that happens. Because when I leave, he not only will know how to fight, he will not only understand many things, but he'll also be able to take care of himself because I have good friends like Jim Jacobs and Bill Cate who are thoroughly and completely honest and competent in every area, who will, I know, continue doing what I have done, and probably a lot better than I've done it. And I know these things, but nevertheless, I have to do my part to keep going as long as I can. And I will do that, and I will mark my words. I will live to see him become a success. Even if I try, I can't forget it. If you still wanted to be loved, you should have never let me go. Somebody said it should be easy to forgive. We all make mistakes, and no one lives without sin. But why'd you have to break my heart? I wasn't ready to let you go yet. Now you're standing at my door If, if God you just came down and gave you a laptop you or a computer or a phone and, and said, you have the chance to send an email to Cos, Cos and Mano. What, what would you write in that email to Cos? Wow, how the, oh shit. How did I do? That's what I'm saying, how did I do? You should have never let me go. Cool.